What's up everybody, I'm Dr. Jordan Weber. Today I'm gonna to go through a full 60 to 90 minute full length mobility session just for you so you can follow along and you can go at your own pace. We're gonna get started into the morning cars, which I like to do as soon as I like to wake up. And as soon as I wake up, I'll perform these controlled articular rotations either in the closet, in the bedroom, in the kitchen, and then I get to the gym I might go over the cars and then I'll go through a mobility session or I'll go into walking, jogging and different locomotor skills before getting the mobility. It just depends on how I feel. Every day is different. I don't really like to plan my workouts. Uh, that's because every day I wake up uh, feeling a new way and whether that's having more energy or less energy, that's going to dictate um, how much energy I'm going to put forth through my workouts. Now, if I had a specific goal, it might be a little bit more strategic and more planned out. But right now, I'm trying to gain maximal movement pattern potential by getting into potentially, you know, positions that are the hardest. Basically, what I'm doing is I'm trying to control each position that I'm in as long as I can and yada, yada, yada. Hi everybody, I'm Dr. Jordan Weber. Today we're going to go through a full mobility session, something I like to do every single day. It takes about 60 to 90 minutes to do daily. Sometimes I spread it out throughout the day. And I also include endurance and strength training, um, you know, three to five days a week. So I'm um, including mobility at least seven days a week, cardio uh, at least four days a week, and then strength at least three days a week. So I'm making sure that I'm hitting mobility, strength, and endurance. Today we're gonna to go through the morning articular control articular rotations, which we're gonna go through first. And then we're gonna go through some uh, different isometric movement patterns, pals and rounds, and I'll, and I'll set you up for some of those activities. So we're gonna start with, um, we're gonna go from the feet up today. So we're gonna start with the toes. Okay, so the toes you can do any time of day. Um, don't be afraid to look at your feet or take your shoes or socks off. We're gonna start with just Pressing the feet into the ground and bringing all 10 toes up off the ground, okay? Now, if you can't control your feet, then you're going to have to pull those toes up and help them stay up passively until you can hold them actively. So hold them here. Hold for about 10 seconds. This is toe extension. Try to keep all angles of your feet on the ground, including the medial, lateral, and heel. So we're not leaning in or out right now. This would be inversion, this would be eversion. Okay, so we're just trying to stay neutral, all 10 toes up. Now we're just gonna keep the big toes up. So just keep those big toes up. So pressing all eight toes into the ground, extending only the big toe. Noticing if one toe can extend better than the other. Okay, that's a big, a big important assessment to make. Now we're gonna go ahead and switch big toes down, small toes up, okay? You should be able to get those up. If not, you're gonna to have to passively pull them up. Hold for about 10 seconds, actively pressing that big toe into the ground. You can also put a band there to see if you're actually pressing into the ground. Now go ahead and switch, hold here. Noticing if the toe goes in or out, this left toe goes out or in, or out, sorry. And I wanna to try to get that to go more medially. From here, switch. Good, and then from here, we're gonna keep all 10 toes up. We're gonna go pinky to big toe. So pinky down, all the way to big toe like a piano. Okay, two more times. Pinky to big, one more. Pinky to big. Now all 10 toes up, just the big toe is gonna touch the ground. All 10 toes up, just the big toe touch, and then back up. Big toe touch, then back up. One more time, big toe touch, back up, and then go ahead and relax. From here, with your ankles and feet, if you want, you can go into E-version, going out 
and holding in this position, and you can also go into inversion. Now, if you're gonna work your ankles, you can take a kettlebell or any type of object that elevates either side of the foot. So here, the outside of my foot is elevated. That means I'm in eversion. So what I can do here is passively stretch this position up to two minutes, and then what I can do is start pressing into eversion, trying to press the outside of my foot into the kettle, and then I can go deeper in eversion and actually go the opposite way, okay? And then from here, I switch. So medial foot on the kettle, I'm in inversion. I'm gonna press into inversion, and then I'm going to go deeper into inversion, okay? So that's different ways you can actively and passively stretch uh, your feet, okay? We're gonna go to the knees now. Now, all right, one more ankle stretch. So if you can go into kneeling, if not, you can use a box for this position and I'll show you how to do that. So we'll, we'll progress and then we'll regress. So if you can get into the combat stance, you're gonna hold right here, okay? Now if you have knee issues, you might, you could put something underneath your cap and sit on it. Um, and then I'll show you one more thing that is also an issue. So from here, you want to get into dorsiflexion of the foot. So that's when the ankle is flexed, okay? It's called dorsiflexion here, okay? From here, what we're gonna do is distribute the chest over the knee, and we're just gonna hold this position passively for up to two minutes, and then we're gonna actively press the foot into the ground, zero to 100% while our whole body is irradiated, and then we're going to go further into dorsiflexion by trying to pull the toe up toward the shin. So it's like PNF stretching, but you can do it yourself, and there's just one more uh, step process to um, the stretch. So passive stretch, actively plantar flex, and then actively dorsiflex, okay? And you can do that to both ankles. Now, if you can't get down to the ground for your ankles, you can also put your foot on a box like this, and you can just kind of squat down like this. So this will take the pressure off the back knee, and you can kind of get into that same position here. Okay, you can also find a higher box, or a, you know maybe even go up onto a table, but then you're gonna also need that hip flexion as well. So again, if we were passively stretching here to two minutes, inhale for four, exhale for eight, anytime you're passively stretching, and then you begin to push or plantar flex into the box, you're not gonna go anywhere, Create tension zero to 100%, hold it for 10 seconds, and then you're gonna try to further your dorsiflexion by pulling your toes up toward your shins, and then go back to your passive stretch. Okay, so that would be tails and rails for the ankle. For the knees, okay, um, you can do these on a box. You can bring your um, thigh up toward your chest, hold on to the back of your hamstring, and hook onto your hands here. External tibial rotation, internal tibial rotation. External, internal. So external, extend the knee. Internal, flex the knee. Okay, external, extend the knee. Internal, flex the knee. Okay, now what we're doing here is we're taking our knee through a controlled articular rotation. Controlled articular rotation, okay? Just like that. Okay, now you can also do these on the ground this okay so if you have a box or if you're using the ground you can do either or just like that making sure that the whole body is tense while you're going through these controlled articular rotations okay for the ankle itself we're going to go through an ankle circle so after all that work on the toes we're going to give our ankle same type of circle as our knee, but in its range of motion through dorsiflexion, plantar flexion, inversion, and eversion here. Okay, we're going to switch. Try to go as slow as you can. It's about 30% effort. 
these are your morning cars, so they're not going to be as controlled or they're not going to be as tight as the ones you might do later in the day where you're actually trying to expand that range. For your kneecaps, you're going to just kind of circulate the kneecaps. Relax the legs. This side is the only controlled articular rotation that you do while you relax. So you take that knee in its 360 degree range and you're going to go around in a circle using your thumbs. Okay? You're kind of manipulating, mobilizing that kneecap in a circle and just seeing if there's any tightness or issues here in both knees. Now if your knee catches or if your knee doesn't move back and forth or up and down, that might be something you might want to get looked at by a, a functional range of release practitioner um, who can assess that appropriately for you or orthopedist or a chiropractor. But um, always try to go with the functional range release practitioners before anyone else because they're going to be able to tell you how to get back into training the correct way. So for your knees, again, we showed you the knee circles. You can also um, wrap the um, opposite hand around the ankle and then hold on to that forearm. And in the internal rotation of the tibia, I can do pals and rounds. So I can strengthen this area of my knee, which is a very weak area. When you turn your foot out in the, in the flex knee position, you're at a very vulnerable spot. So what we're doing here is we're putting ourselves in that vulnerable spot and we're stretching passively for two minutes. And then we're gonna actively go the opposite way or pushing into the hand. And then we're gonna go the opposite way of that, away from the hand. So passive, active, and then regressive. And you're gonna go through those types of uh, steps to increase the, um, the space and the strength in that knee. So you can bulletproof that knee by going through these stretches here Passive hold, progressive push into the hand, and then regressive away from the hand, and then back to your passive. Okay, you can do that in both um, the medial and the lateral side of that knee. So if you've got knee issues, this would be a stretch that, one, you want to be very careful with first, because it might be a very sensitive area. Never go into pain and never just pull it right out. Very passive stretch and breathe appropriately. Then begin to apply ample amount of pressure, zero to 100% of your safest effort, not 100% where you're gonna injure yourself. After that, hold that for 10 seconds, and then you're gonna regress by going the opposite way. Okay, the regressive angular isometric load is going the opposite way, the opposite direction where you're going before. So progressive into the hand, regressive away from the hand, trying to pull away from the hand, further that external rotation of the tibia, and that's that range we're trying to improve actively here without just pushing it over there. So improving both sides of that joint in order to improve uh, the range of motion in both ways, this way and that way. From here, we talked about the knees. So we're going to talk about the hips. So feet, knees, kneecaps, hips. Hips, we like to go to quadruped and hands and knees, co-contract the biceps and triceps. We're going to flex the knee inward and then go out and then back around without moving the back. Okay, in, out, back around, forward, out, back, now we're going to go reverse. Heel up toward the sky, keep the knee bent the whole time like you're squeezing a tennis ball, or if you have one, use one. Go all the way around, just like that. Back, around, keep the knee bent 90 degrees. Dorsey flex the foot, okay? Let's try the other side. Hands and knees, co-contract the biceps and triceps, knees over the hips, hands over the shoulders. Dorsey flex both feet, We're going to flex the hip, abduct the hip, internally rotate as you extend the hip back. Try not to move the back, and repeat the process. And then reverse the process. And this is getting your full range of motion of your hip going through internal and external hip um, rotation and then also extension and flexion. So getting all ranges of the hips. 
Now, if you want to expand space in the hips, what you're going to want to do is get into that 90-90 position. Knees at 90, hips at 90, okay? Feet, ankles at 90, everything's at 90 degrees here. So basically, you want this foot in line with the shin, okay, and ankle on the same line. Sometimes if you find a line, it's easier. And then also, maybe trying to find a line for your front shin. That way you can really just line everything up. Okay, I'll get right here, kind of show you. So right here, this almost looks like a perfect box right here, or almost like a rectangle, okay? From here, I'm gonna face forward toward that front knee. My chin is in line with my sternum and my, um, and my hip here, okay? What I'm gonna do is look forward, and my knee should be right in front of my ASAS joint, and then my knee is parallel with the ankle, and the ankle and the foot are parallel as well, or perpendicular here, okay? So this is at 90 degree angles in all ways. Back as well, the knee is lined up with the hip, the knee is lined up with the ankle, and the foot is dorsiflexed. From here, I'm gonna face forward, like I said, hold this stretch passively, inhale for four, exhale for eight. I'm going to have an anterior pelvic tilt. I'm going to try to relax the glutes a little bit as I stretch them. Okay. And arch the lower back, chest is up. You can use any type of support such as dowels, two boxes, two kettlebells, two medicine balls, two yoga blocks, whatever you want to use. And as you get advanced, you'll feel comfortable in this position. Now, if you have pain in the back hip right now, it's unbearable. I mean, you have poor internal rotation of your rear hip. Take note of that, write that down and pause it. If your front hip is having issues, okay, and you're not able to stay in this position because of your front hip, that means your front hip has issues in external rotation, okay? So you can switch sides and see what hip is doing what. Now, if this hip hurts here, then you know that that's external rotation, internal rotation. So in pals and rails, 90-90, we're getting external rotation, internal rotation of both hips. So we're actively engaging and stretching both hips right now. And as we're doing that, we're going to first focus on the external rotation, okay? Then we'll get to internal. So to focus on external rotation of the lead hip, we're going to sit in this position, passive hold up to two minutes, breathe, inhale for four, exhale for eight, After two minutes, we're going to start pressing the foot, ankle, shin, knee, hip into the ground from 10%, 20%, 30%. Press the hands into the ground, 40%, 50%. Everything is tight. Back, knee, foot, hip, everything. Pushing into the ground, using the chest. All muscles start recruiting 50%, 60%, 70%, 80%, 90%. All the way to 100% of your safest, greatest effort. Once you hit 100%, you're going to feel lots of of neurological uh, stimulation throughout the hip. You're going to feel uncomfortable a little bit, but if you feel pain, back away from the pain, go underneath the pain threshold. From here, once you hit 100% effort, you're going to hold it for 10 seconds. 10 seconds of progress, 10 seconds of 100% hold. You're in your progressive angle, so you're trying to contract while you're in external rotation, okay? Now, we're going to go the opposite way after holding 10 seconds. We're going to go into the regressive angular isometric. Okay, we're going to pull the knee up toward the chest as high as you can, upwards to 10 seconds. This is your regressive angular isometric load, and then back down nice and easy to your passive stretch. This is going to help expand space in your front hip right now, or external rotation. Now, to get internal rotation, what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to twist toward internal rotation of the back hip, and you're going to feel a deep stretch once we turn and face this way, okay? If this is too much, you can bring your hands behind you just like this. Wherever you are, you're going to hold and breathe upwards of two minutes. Inhale for four, exhale for eight. Then we're going to begin contracting the adductors, the muscles that are being stretched right now, into um, the ground. So we're going to be contracting the muscles right now pushing into the ground, zero to 100% after our two minute passive stretch. Then we're going to try to 
contract the opposite tissue of the joint. So trying to get the foot off the ground, going into deeper internal rotation. So one, contract internal rotation tissue, and then two, you're gonna to try to pull away from the ground of the foot, going deeper into internal rotation. Okay, and so that's how you're gonna gain more space in that back hip of internal rotation. So I'll go over that on this side one more time. I need to even it out anyway. So getting into the position first, just getting set up right is most important. Okay, face in the direction, anterior pelvic tilt, chin in line with the sternum and navel, ASAS in front of the knee, knee out in front of the ankle, in line with the back shin, both feet flexed 90 degrees here, hold and breathe. And then, for my external rotation, press the foot, ankle, knee, hip into the ground from 0 to 100%. Full body begins to recruit muscles. Contract the outside tissue. Then I'm gonna pull the tissue up after I've held that 100% for 10 seconds. In the regressive angle, holding here upwards of 10 seconds. After 10 seconds, I'm gonna release it back down and then go back into my passive stretch. Or internal rotation, I'm gonna twist and turn and rotate toward my back hip. I'm gonna hold passively up to two minutes. Then I'm gonna begin contracting the tissue that's being stretched here, my adductors. From here, contracting that tissue, 100, zero to 100% effort. After 100% effort for 10 seconds, I'm gonna to try to pull the foot off the ground, going deeper into internal rotation using the opposite side of the tissue to get that foot off the ground. And then holding that for 10 seconds, and then going back to your passive stretch. Okay, now if that's too much, like I said, you can bring your hands right here, okay? Another way you can get external rotation, pals and rails, is to go into butterfly. Holding here, holding your feet, pressing, um, holding onto the backs or around the ankles and pressing your elbows into your knees, holding here passively two minutes. Then our progressive angular isometric load is to press our knees into our elbows and our elbows into our knees from zero to 100% effort. After we hit 100% effort, we're gonna hold for 10 seconds. After 10 seconds hold, we're going to regress the angle or go the opposite way, furthering into external rotation. So from here, we're going to pull up or push up, and then we're gonna pull down, trying to get those knees down toward the ground, furthering external rotation opening up external rotation. Now, if you want internal rotation in a different way, you can go into bear sit. One knee goes into internal rotation. Passive hold, two minutes. Press into the hands, zero to 100%. 100% hold, 10 seconds. And then further the stretch into internal rotation. And then passive stretch again. Repeat the process as much as needed. Opposite side, knee goes in, both knees are bent as much as you can here. Passive stretch, two minutes. Press the hands into the knees, knees into the hands, zero to 100%. 10 second hold at that 100%. After that 10 second hold, regress the angle by bringing the knee toward the ground, furthering internal rotation. Okay, so that's pails and rails, butterfly and bear sit, plus 90-90. Now what we're gonna do is go into, we went from feet, ankles, knees, kneecaps, hips, hip pals and rails, what's next? Our spine. All right, so we're gonna go with our lower back. You can get into a frog position with the feet out. And what we're gonna do here is we're gonna try, just try to arch the back, the lower back here. And then we're going to try to round the lower back. Same thing, segmentally lower it. And segmentally round it. Now you can only assess yourself if you videotape yourself. So make sure that you see how you're doing with that. You can also go to your hands and knees, cat and cow, round the back, tuck the chin, 
Dorsi flex the feet, knees underneath the hips, hands underneath the shoulders. Co-contract the biceps and triceps. Round the back, protract the scapula, tuck the chin, tuck the pelvis, you know, posterior pelvic tilt, pressing into the ground using the back muscles here to round the back out. From here, we're going to push away, push forward with the hands, trying to push the mat forward, and then knees and feet back, trying to just pull the mat apart. So we're pulling the mat apart, rounded back, breathe and hold. From here, we're going to slowly start to anterior pelvic tilt, lowering our low spine, and then start pulling into the ground as we go lower back, middle back, scapula retracts. Now we're going to pinch the ground with our hands and knees, going in the opposite direction. So we're, pull, we're pushing away, now we're pulling the mat toward us. So we're trying to squeeze the mat, pinch the mat, hands and knees, knees and hands, head is up, anterior pelvic tilt. Then from here, we're going the opposite way. Begin to push as you curve the lower back. Slowly go from back, upper back, to neck and head. And we'll try one more time going the other way, pushing into the ground here. Now pull away from the ground, anterior pelvic tilt, lower back, mid back, upper back, head, neck. While you're in this position, you can begin to get your wrists. A lot of people have wrist issues, but they never do anything about it. They just they just adapt their push-ups in their in their um, any type of push movement. So first, you want to be able to stretch your wrist out passively for two minutes. After you've gone about two minutes, you want to be able to um, push into the ground further and then regress the angle like that. Now, when you're starting with your wrist, however, you're going to First, perform your control articular rotations, where your hands are in front of your elbows, and you keep your hands straight, and you go through your, your wrists full range of motion. Notice that I'm not going like this with my wrists, because that would be elbows, okay? So just the wrists. Keep the wrists in front of the elbow, just like that. Okay, you can also do that with your palms squeezed. You can also do that by holding on to one finger. It's a little bit different. Try different fingers. Okay, you can also squeeze the fist, pinky down, thumb up. You can go ulnar deviation and radial deviation. Control the articular rotation. Now, if you're trying to expand space and strengthen, like we said, stretch passively two minutes, diaphragmatic breathing. Then we're going to start pressing the fingertips and palms into the ground from zero to 100% effort. After a 0% effort, 10 second hold, we're going to then go the opposite direction into wrist extension, furthering wrist extension, trying to get those fingertips off the ground. If you need to, lean forward. Or if you can, try to get those fingers up by holding this position. It's almost impossible, but some people can do it. Okay, so now other side, like I was saying, passive stretch, hold, two minutes. Inhale for four, exhale for eight. Then begin to press the fingertips and palms into the ground, zero to 100%. Go up progressively and slowly, 20 seconds, and then hold 10 seconds, so about 30 second pails. And then a 10 second rail is where you bring your fingers off the ground into full extension with the wrist, okay? And then go back to that same process, passive hold, active, regressive, passive. And then go through that as many times as you need or as prescribed. Now, at, in the beginning, you don't have to hold it where there's any pain. So if you're starting to feel any pain, you're pressing too hard or you're holding too long. So maybe subtract some times. After you do those pals and rounds for your ankle or for your wrist, Go back to your controlled articular rotations. Okay. And now for your elbows. <clears throat> for your elbows, one, you're gonna supinate your palms. Okay. Elbows are glued to the rib cage. You're gonna pretend there's a beam of light 
going out through your palms and it's going up at the ceiling here, okay? Now we're going to go ahead and go behind our body with that and then pronate and then push down that force, okay? Supinate, elbow flexion, pronate, elbow extension. Supinate, flexion, pronate, extension. Okay, squeeze the biceps as you supinate and supinate as much as you can as you flex. As you flex, go ahead and pronate. As you flex, go ahead and pronate. Push down and away. Now you can also do them with your arms teed out. Supinate, externally rotate the shoulders. Flex, pronate, push, skim the water. And then back to supination, external rotation, nice and slow. Flex, pronate, push. Let's go the other way, just like that. So that would be for your elbows. Okay, and during the day, what I'll do is I'll squeeze my biceps and my triceps, and I'll supinate as much as I can, and I'll pronate as much as I can, uh, as much as I can, because I'll feel a good click, I'll feel a release, a real quick release, just by maintaining my supination and pronation. Okay, so that's my elbows, wrists. We're gonna get into shoulders and scapula next. So scapula, you can get back into that hands and knees. You can do scapula circles in this position. Okay, protract, retract, depression, elevation of the scapula. Okay, you can also go to kneeling. You can have one arm out in front of the shoulder and then go out 10 degrees. And then you can begin the scapula circle, just like that. And then the opposite way. You can also make a fist. You can bring this hand across. I like to hold on to the chest. Feel the muscles working. Same side or other side. Try to keep the elbows straight. Try not to jet the head forward. You can do both at the same time. You can do these standing, sitting, or sitting, kneeling. Or at your desk. Okay? Then you can, uh, for your scapula, you can do them next to your sides as well. Keep your middle finger in one spot, and then go in a circle. Protract. Elevation, retract depression. The opposite. Good, so that would be your scapula. Now for your glenohumeral joint or your shoulder, what we're gonna do is stand or kneel or sit, seating kneeling, and we're going to Flex one hand, or both arms at first, just like this, and then we're gonna go into shoulder flexion, right in front of the shoulder, and then we're gonna go up toward the ear, we're gonna hold right here. So our thumb is back here, our other hand is squeezed, we're trying, not arching the back, trying to find your true range. Biceps is back, thumb is back, now we're gonna turn our bicep forward, Try to try, turn your bicep forward. As you turn your bicep forward, internally ro rotate the shoulder as you extend all the way to shoulder extension. So as you're extending, keep going into internal rotation until the back of the hand meets the side of the hip, okay? From here, we're gonna go back into extension, external rotation, reach up, back or forward and down. Try that one more time, we're gonna squeeze the fist, shoulder flexion, biceps back, turn the bicep toward the ear, turn the back of the hand toward the side as you reach all the way back. And reverse. Good, now you can do this with a lacrosse ball in your hand. You can hold on to a dowel just like this. You can put your hand against a wall. There's lots of different ways you can do this in various locations. So again, shoulder flexion, 
internal rotation, all the way to extension. Back of the hand next to the side, it's important. And then externally rotate, once you hit that roadblock, reach up, forward, and down. Okay, swimmers, fingertips touch, back of the head, away from the back of the head, extend the elbows, internally rotate, as you extend, this time we're going to hold extension as we bring our back of our hands behind our lower back, relax, elbows flare out, retract the scapula, extend the shoulders, externally rotate, reach back, behind our head. Okay, you can do that on the mat as well with your face down, maybe a uh, some type of um, towel for your forehead. Hands here, tuck the feet, create a radiation throughout the body, extend the elbows, internally rotate, extend the shoulders, bend the elbows, relax the elbows down. Retract the scapula, extend the elbows and shoulders, in externally rotate, reaching forward, fingertips tucked behind the head, and then back to relax. So that would be your hover, or your swimmer hover. Now if you want to get your shoulder and your back, your spinal cord, this is the infinity. One of my favorite ones we're going to do is extend the wrist first, one wrist, then bring that same shoulder off the ground. And then we're going to bend the opposite knee. As we bend the opposite knee, we're going to try to reach and touch the foot, foot to hand, hand to foot, bend the knee and elbow, and try to bring that shoulder back as much as possible, hold it here, squeeze, and then come back and relax. Switch, extend the wrist, flex the shoulder, bend the knee, opposite side, extend the hip, Reach for the foot, foot to the hand, squeeze and hold, and relax. This is the infinity. Switch, extend the wrist, flex the shoulder, flex the knee, opposite side, extend the hip, reach, squeeze, and relax. From here, extend the wrist, flex the shoulder, opposite knee bend, extend that hip, reach, squeeze, Hold and relax. So that's a lot of different things going on there. For your scapula or for your shoulders, um, we've hit shoulder scapula. Now we're going to let's see. We got elbows. We got wrists. Now we're going to neck. Okay, standing kneeling or seated kneeling or in a box. From here, squeeze the whole body. Drop the chin. Rotate, ear falls behind, chin up, look over the right or opposite shoulder, turn the chin down, scrape the uh, scrape clavicle and then back around. Don't move anything but the neck. Squeeze your fists and then go the other way. T spine, upper back, cross the hands, rotate, laterally bend, flex forward, rotate, laterally bend, and extend. Rotate, laterally bend, flex forward, laterally bend, extend. Other way, rotate. Laterally bend, flex forward, rotate as we laterally bend, and extend. One more time, rotate, laterally bend, flex forward, rotate, bend, back into extension. All right, so we've hit the neck, glenohumeral, scapula, T-spine, low spine, full spine, knees, hips, kneecaps, external and internal rotation of the hips, Dorsiflexion, plantar flexion of the foot. Actually, we didn't get plantar flexion. I'll give you one quick one before you're out. So seated kneeling, 
You're in plantar flexion. Hold passively two minutes. Then, if you want a little bit more of a stretch, just lean back. Okay? Less of a stretch, lean forward. Okay? More of a stretch, just hold here. Two minutes. Inhale four, exhale eight. Breathe. Then we're going to start pressing the tops of the feet into the ground. Okay? Going in your progressive angle here in plantar flexion. We're going to press the tops of the feet into the ground from zero to 100%. Safest, greatest effort at 10 at 100%, hold it for 10 seconds. After we've reached 10 seconds, we're gonna go further into plantar flexion, trying to get the tops of the feet off the ground. Squeezing, you're gonna feel the bottoms of your feet start to cramp, and maybe even your calves, and you can even lean back if you wanna make it harder, and you'll feel everything working in your gastrocnemius, and also in your feet working um, intrinsically. After that, a good stretch right after is to extend the toes. Make sure all 10 toes are on the ground. You can do pals and rails here where you hold this position passively zero or for two minutes and then you can begin to try to um, extend the toes or try to flex the toes into the ground zero to 100% and then you can try to extend the toes deeper. Okay, And remember, you can do those pals and rails contractions passive, active, regressive, passive through any stretch that you want. External rotation, Hold passive, progressive, regressive. Internal rotation, hold passive, active, regressive. Okay, so just think about different stretches and different things that you can do. Post them, we'll comment, we'll let you know if it's working, if it's not working, and I can always uh, help you out. All right, thanks a lot. What's up everybody? I have about 40 minutes of mobility I'm going to teach you through. I'm going to go through the controlled articular rotations of each joint, joint by joint, starting with the feet. And I'm also going to take you through some pales and rails or some progressive and regressive angular isometric load movements. Rule number one when you're doing your controlled articular rotations is to move slow, is to irradiate your whole entire body and to focus on controlling the end ranges of the joint. So trying to take your joint to, through its full range without compensating and using other muscles or joints to do so. So trying to isolate that joint is number one. Number two, when you're going through your pals and rails, your progressive and regressive angular isometric load, make sure that your whole body is irradiating. Make sure that when you're passively stretching that you're breathing in for four, exhaling for eight. You're holding your passive stretches for at least one minute to two minutes at tops. Then you're going through your progressive angular isometric load, which is contracting the tissue that's being stretched. So if I was stretching my external rotation, I'd be contracting my chest and my anterior portion of my whole shoulder here, going this way, right? So that'd be my progressive angular. I'd hold that zero to 100% effort. After 10 seconds of 100% effort, I'd do the regressive angular isometric load. So if my progressive angle is going this way, contracting the tissues that's being stretched this way, then the regressive would be go the opposite way or further into external rotation. So active, progressive going this way, but using like a, uh, using a uh, TRX uh, setup here and then going the opposite way. So that would be an example of pals and rails, but I'm going to take you through that now. 